And to show you the true power of this molecule, we're going to start with one atom deep inside. We pull back, and you see it form its A's and T's and C's and G's and the classic double spiral. And then it starts the mysterious process that creates a healthy new baby. And the interesting thing is that every human baby, every baby born, is 99.9% .9 identical in its genetic code to every other baby. So the tiniest differences in our genes can be hugely important, can contribute to differences in height, physique, maybe even talents, aptitudes, and can also explain what can break, what can make us sick. Cracking the code of those minuscule differences in DNA that influence health and illness is what the Human Genome Project is all about. Since 1990, scientists all over the world at university and government labs have been involved in a massive effort to read all three billion A's, T's, G's, and C's of human DNA. They predicted it would take at least 15 years. That was partly because, in the early days of the project, a scientist could spend years, an entire career, trying to read just a handful of letters in the human genome. It took 10 years to find the one genetic mistake that causes cystic fibrosis. Another 10 years to find the gene for Huntington's disease. 15 years to find one of the genes that increase the risk for breast cancer. One letter at a time, painfully, slowly, frustratingly prone to mistakes and false leads. We asked Dr. Robert Waterston, a pioneer in mapping DNA, to show us the way it used to be done. The original ladders for DNA sequence, we actually read by putting a little uh, letter next to the band that we were calling and then uh, writing those down on a piece of paper or into the computer after that. Uh, it's horrendous. And we haven't mentioned the hardest part. This here, magnified 50,000 times, is an actual clump of DNA, chromosome 17. Now, if you look inside, you will find, of course, hundreds of millions of A's and C's and T's and G's, but it turns out that only about 1% of them are active and important. These are the genes that scientists are searching for. So somewhere in this dense chemical forest are genes involved in deafness, Alzheimer's, cancer, cataracts, but where? This is such a maze, scientists need a map. But at the old pace, that would take close to forever. A C and then an A. And then came the revolution. In the last 10 years, the entire process has been computerized. That cost hundreds of millions of dollars. But now, instead of decoding only a few hundred letters by hand in a day, together these machines can do a thousand every second. And that has made all the difference. This is something that's going to go in the textbooks. Everybody knows that. Everybody, when the Genome Project was being born, was consciously aware of their role in history. Getting the letters out is, has been described as finding the blueprint of a human being, finding a manual for a human being, finding the code of a human being. What's your metaphor? Oh, golly gee. I mean, I, I, you can have very highfalutin metaphors for this kind of stuff. This is basically a parts list, right? Blueprints and all these things, it's just a parts list. It's a parts list with a lot of parts. 
if you take an airplane, a Boeing 777, yeah. I think it has like 100,000 parts. If I gave you a parts list for the Boeing 777, in one sense, you'd know a lot. You'd know 100,000 components that have got to be there, screws and wires and you know, rudders and things like that. On the other hand, uh, I bet you wouldn't know how to put it together, and I bet you wouldn't know why it flies. Well, we're in the same boat. We now have a parts list. That's what the Human Genome Project is about, is getting the parts list. If you want to understand the plane, you have to have the parts list, but that's not enough to understand why it flies. But of course, you'd be crazy not to start with the parts list. And one reason it's so important to understand all those parts, to decode every letter of the genome, is because sometimes, out of three billion base pairs in our DNA, just one single letter can make a difference.